Welcome on this third Friday of Lent to Music and Meditation, the time where we pause and through music and candlelight, scripture and prayer, silence, we focus our thoughts on God. We focus our thoughts on the calling that God has laid before us, the people that God has called us to be. The service follows the style of Teze, incorporating the silence and song, scripture and prayer by candlelight, all of it working together to lead us to contemplate and celebrate our relationship with God and with one another. The music in this service intentionally repeats many times so that we might grab a hold of the few words that are part of it and they might become the meditation of our hearts that we can close our eyes and escape into that or just gaze at a candle as part of it. The texts are short and reflective, encouraging one to feel and interact with the readings personally and the songs. And the prayers are invitational and conversational to promote an experience of dialogue with the living present Christ. I encourage those of you that might be joining with us at home, if you have a candle nearby, to light it as a part of joining with all of the candles here, a, a sign of the presence of the Holy Spirit. And if you have another candle nearby, you'll see me at a point in our time together during one of our songs, Light the Candle, and it's a way of uplifting the prayers of all of those present here with me in person this evening, but also a way for you at home at that time to light another candle as a way to lift your prayers to God. Let us now turn to God in this time of music and meditation. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Exodus 20, 1 through 17. God spoke all these words. I am God, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of a life of slavery. No other gods, only me. No carved gods of any size, shape, or form, or anything whatever, whether of things that fly or walk or swim. Don't bow down to them and don't serve them, because I am God, your God, and I'm a most jealous, jealous God, punishing the children for any sins their parents pass on to them to the third, and yes, even the fourth generation of those who hate me. But I'm unswervingly loyal to the thousands who love me and keep my commandments. No using the name of God, your God, in curses or silly banter. God won't put up with the irreverent use of his name. Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Work six days and do everything you need to do. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to God, your God. Don't do any work, not you or your son nor your daughter nor your servant nor your maid nor your animals, not even the foreign guest visiting in your town. For in six days, God made heaven, earth, and sea and everything in them. He rested on the seventh day. Therefore, God blessed the Sabbath day. He set it apart as a holy day. Honor your father and mother so that you'll live a long time in the land that God, your God, is giving you. No murder, no adultery, no stealing, no lies about your neighbor, no lusting after your neighbor's house or wife or servant or maid or ox or donkey. Don't set your heart on anything that is your neighbor's.
1 Corinthians 1, 18 through 25. The message that points to Christ on the cross seems like sheer silliness to those hell-bent on destruction. But for those on the way of salvation, it makes perfect sense. This is the way God works, and most powerfully as it turns out. It's written, I'll turn conventional wisdom on its head, I'll expose so-called experts as shams. So where can you find someone truly wise, truly educated, truly intelligent in this day and age? Hasn't God exposed it all as pretentious nonsense? Since the world, in all its fancy wisdom, never had a clue when it came to knowing God. God, in his wisdom, took delight in using what the world considered stupid, preaching of all things, to bring those who trust him into the way of salvation. While Jews clamor for miraculous demonstrations and Greeks go in for philosophical wisdom, we go right on proclaiming Christ, the crucified. Drew, Jews treat this like an anti-miracle, and Greeks pass it off as absurd. But to us who are personally called by God himself, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is God's ultimate miracle and wisdom all wrapped up in one. Human wisdom is so cheap, so impotent, next to the seeming absurdity of God. Human strength can't begin to compete with God's weakness.
John chapter 2, verses 13 through 22. When the Passover feast, celebrated each spring by the Jews, was about to take place, Jesus traveled up to Jerusalem. He found the temple teeming with people, selling cattle and sheep and doves. The loan sharks were also there in full strength. Jesus put together a whip out of strips of leather and chased them out of the temple, stampeding the sheep and cattle, upending the tables of the loan sharks, spilling coins left and right. He told the dove merchants, Get your things out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a shopping mall. That's when his disciples remembered the scripture, Zeal for your house consumes me. But the Jews were upset. They asked, what credentials can you present to justify this? Jesus answered, tear down this temple, and in three days, I'll put it back together. They were indignant. It took 46 years to build this temple, and you're going to rebuild it in three days? But Jesus was talking about his body as the temple. Later, after he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered he had said this. They then put two and two together and believed both what was written in Scripture and what Jesus said.
prayer will be responsive. Every time you hear me say, hear our prayer, the following sung response will be lifted. Liberating God, in love you have set us free. Free from slavery to sin and self, free to know and love you, free to follow and serve you. We praise you for your faithful love toward us, for the many ways you have demonstrated that love to us. We see your love in the natural world around us, in the sky and trees and rivers. We see your love and the gift of your commandments, the rules for living that guide us into right relationship with you and with the people around us. And we see your love in Jesus Christ who lived and died to bring us life. Because we have experienced your love, we come before you with confidence, bringing our needs and the needs of our world God, in your unfailing love, hear our prayer. We pray for those who live surrounded by violence, whether from war or political unrest, crime or domestic abuse, we pray for those who have been victims of violent crime and for those whose loved ones have been injured or murdered. God, in your unfailing love, hear our prayer. We pray for those who find themselves involved in crime whether by choice or through coercion, those caught up into patterns of behavior they feel they cannot escape, those who have turned to crime to pay for their addictions, those who are imprisoned. God, in your unfailing love, hear our prayer. Hear We pray for our homes and families, for parents and caretakers juggling the responsibilities of work and family, for spouses whose marriages are breaking down, for children chafing under parental authority or expectations, for those caught up in adultery or adulterous thoughts. God, in your unfailing love, hear our prayer. We pray for the many people in our world who do not yet know you and have not yet experienced the new life that comes from knowing Christ Jesus, who continue to search for purpose and meaning. God, in your unfailing love, hear our prayer. Hear Merciful God, give us strength and courage to keep your commandments, to live in faithful obedience to your will. Guard our hearts and minds from all that might distract us from living out our commitment to you. Help us to find our true worth in knowing you more fully and serving you more faithfully. God, in your unfailing love, hear our prayer. Loving God, we come to you in worship and thanksgiving, 
You are greater than we can understand. You are more loving than our hearts can respond to. You are wider than we can know. Open our eyes to see the wonderful truths you have, you have shown in Jesus. To give ourselves to you so that we may learn what you want us to be and to understand the things you are saying to us. God, in your unfailing love, hear our prayer. Loving God in Jesus, you chose to come to the world in humility. You chose the path the world saw as foolish. You used what the world considered weak, and in that was strength, wisdom, and love, the cornerstone on which all rests. In the name and words of Jesus Christ, we worship, adore, and pray to you, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. 